first do a little introduction okay. before I ask the first question. But first of all, um, I'm truly very honored, truly, that uh, I'm very grateful that you are giving me the opportunity to uh, to talk to you in person here in your own Monta Sahaja in the south of Portugal. I've got a short introduction before we start, and then I will come up with my first question to you. But first, I want to thank three people who made this possible. First of all, my dear friend and my brother Cornelis Bloch, who was, is, have been here twice, and he's uh, already for many years a very active member of the Sangha in Utrecht, and he senses his love. Uh, secondly, I thank Satya Devi, because she appears to be the bridge between them. And, of course, I want to give a great thank you to Kalyani, who was a kind of guide for me in the last past months before we are here. So, Muji, millions of people all over the world are following your pointings, and I'm one of them. For many years now, you have been a great source of inspiration for me in my daily life. I follow your satsangs regularly and I've participated in several online retreats and also two times I had the joy of being participant in a silent retreat. One's in the Netherlands and one here in Samar, yes. in Portugal. So I'm quite familiar with your pointings and uh, your impressive and amazing way of making complexity simple. Mm. My personal hunger is in life is to really be free, to find out what the truth is, and besides that, to find out how consciousness works. My company is called Conscious Creation. <laughs> the path of self-inquiry has started very early in my life, when I was still a young child. And up until today, I faced a lot of thresholds and challenges, have done a lot of personal work uh, to enhance the light in myself. So for me, it's amazing. And once again, it's very, very special to be here. So close to you and to be able to ask my authentic questions to you that are alive, still longing for an answer. Mm -hmm. And the challenge I face is to ask you questions from the heart instead of the mind, because you once said a real dialogue has to start between consciousness and consciousness and not between mind to mind. However, <laughs> my mind and my person came up with seven themes and various questions, which possibly is far, far too much, but let us see what yes. Grace will bring us. Oh, that's good. That's good. First question is related to the focus of this podcast. The podcast wants to stimulate the listeners to do self-inquiry. The tagline of the pod podcast is called Living Your Inner Call. And the assumption is that everyone has the same nature, although everyone is also having their own qualities and maybe also another purpose in life, being here and add the different qualities you have been given to development of humankind. So my first question to you is, is there such a thing as an inner call for every human being? Yes, it's a term, inner core. Uh, I say it is a term because uh, from another perspective, I would say from a higher perspective, um, what is called core now? No, call. It's an inner call. Call. Not core. Not it's core. Oh, <laughs> we must keep core somewhere. Keep core. <laughs> no. Keep core somewhere as well. Somewhere there. Inner call. It's, a, it's a, li living okay. your inner call. Inner it's call. calling you. Okay, okay, okay. And, and do you uh, think there is such a thing as an inner call? Yes. I can put it also, I'll come back to call. I can put it almost uh, opportunity or purpose which is very, um, mm, it may take uh, quite a long time to recognize whether you may call it an inner call or an inner purpose, a higher purpose. So um, it will be meaningless until mm, one comes to a place where there is a sense of urgency to go beyond what we normally would uh, call daily life and to go more deeply, to even be aware that there's an opportunity uh, 
mm, to move into a higher state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And by saying a higher state of consciousness, maybe some people, the word consciousness is already being very spiritual and they're but you are this has to be for people who already have some interest or some they are responding to something everyone is responding to some kind of call yeah, the call can be of two types it can be a call towards the world or through the mind to pursue some project to fulfill some projections or some idea because for every living being let's 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 confine it to human in the human world um, uh, naturally are on a path to evolve in some level for everyone all life is in a movement towards evolution now that evolution uh, may uh, appear in different on different ways if you are very strongly identified as a personal self then your goal or call or um, drive will be to fulfill whatever it will you imagine will bring you a personal fulfillment mm -hmm. and that could take the form of taking care of your family um, reaching the height of your uh, projected career or whatever it is we have we are always called by something and where that call may originate from uh, we don't really know but uh, I feel the roles that we play are less important. The fact that whatever role we find ourselves in, we are still driven to either um, reach the highest stage of that um, natural yearning, or um, if you have a career path, and it is something that you enjoy. Not everyone is enjoying a career. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they may be, uh, uh, maybe the goal someone has, maybe the call someone or the urge that they have is to go here, but it may seem at one point that's not yet available, and they may have to go here first, to go here and so on. But whatever journey we take, there is some force behind it. And... Uh, where I would want to come in on this question of does everyone have a call? Um, because the call can seem so diverse. One has a call to become a professional someone, someone has a call to have a family and to have a, you know to, to raise children and you know, successfully and so on. We all have different uh, parts in that way. But um, I feel ultimately all beings on all calls are going towards something. Mm -hmm. And sometimes way beyond the imagined uh, uh, um, goal or objective that someone may experience at a certain point in their life. Maybe at somewhere along the line, we have uh, fulfilled certain goals or just abandoned some because a new direction has appeared for you. So it would be very difficult to address that in any kind of precise way, because mm -hmm. no one knows. You start going this way, and 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 uh, you're going this way, and then at some point, you you develop much more f force going another way, and it can be like this. And many people are familiar with that, uh, those kind of uh, patterns. Uh, for myself, I would say ultimately, the highest calling I would say, uh, for a human being, is to awaken to the truth of who they really are rather than who we are at a condition to believe we are. Now, that condition may take the form that comes through your parents or through society largely or so on. Um, and it's not so linear also, as I said before. It may start out in a certain direction, and it veers to the right and goes up and down and so on. But I feel that at the other end of the calling is some power, some magnetism, uh, so you could say there's a kind of inner compass guiding you. Yes, so, we may not be aware of it. No. We may, um, because we are very strongly oriented towards our thoughts mm -hmm. and conditioning and so on. And that may feel to be the earliest call is to follow that path. But along the way, mm -hmm. we encounter quite unexpected um, uh, 
opportunities or people or situations that may uh, change your direction towards uh, yeah. in, in another way. But may I relate it to yourself? Because, mm. of course, uh, everybody can read about your biography uh, in, in, on the website muji.org, but I always ask my guests up front to come up with turning points in their lives, yes. transformational points, yeah. which make them made, well, come here. Yeah. And if I examine your life from a distance, then I think there were two very important calls, I would even call them. Mm -hmm. And that's your uh, your meeting with Michael yes. in, in London. Mm -hmm. uh, you call it a Christian myth, a uh, mystical. Okay, yes. And later on with Papa G. Mm -hmm. And could you then, if we now talk about call, see that as an as the inner call which is appeal, yes, which is inviting you to yes um as i was saying earlier everyone has a call they may not recognize it mm -hmm. it's as though uh, only on hindsight yeah. looking back you may say yeah. okay i went this and i can see where what this was actually is, going yeah. Yeah. but yeah. It, we don't have foresight we yeah. don't have no. we know where we're going no. so even the meeting with michael a very important um, powerful meeting in my life uh, it was not a recognized pr previous to its happening i did not have no. any sense no. there was something coming you see but uh, but there was this what i would call intuition uh, of inner knowing of the importance of what's happening or yes. is that too much mind? No, 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 it's very good. Um, what I could say about this is that um, life is already maybe not to your present state of consciousness, is already sending certain... Uh, it's like you're being drawn along some path, but you mm -hmm. may not consciously recognize that. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. call that, that call is a call of preparation. Okay. But you may not be conscious of it, mm -hmm. you see? I was not conscious. I was not expecting anything at all. Mm -hmm. So, on the, if we start at the place of Michael, you see, I can put it down to many different points of calling, mm -hmm. but they were not strong enough for me mm -hmm. to recognize them as so as profound as what happened with Michael. So, in meeting Michael, it felt like a very incidental thing. Like it just happened, you know, along the path. So, when I was told that this person had come, and had seen. Uh, some stained glass that I'd made, and it was in the window. Um, it really wasn't about that for him. He was already come. He already had a call to come to me. Yeah. He didn't know who I was. I didn't know who he is. But some energy had drawn him to this house. You see, and some people have that intuitive sensitivity that they just uh, they're not planning their life. You see, if you have a life where you're planning and projecting where you want to go, and then I would say that you're not really as mm, deeply in alignment with the universal calling, the universal pull. And this is why now I'd call to say that everyone is in this pull. And this pull, you may call it towards God, or towards universal consciousness, or a call to awaken to your, the fullness of your potential. So it may not be conscious, oh. Um, but at some point, even on meeting Michael, um, even the first meeting, it, there was nothing so profound. It's just that I had a, a liking for this person. Uh, and, uh, you know, very early in the meeting, I mean, he, he, it seemed like, oh, you, I saw your stained glass. I also make stained glass. It looks like this was a kind of importance, but that was quickly dropped. It didn't go further. We didn't talk no. about stained glass after this. No. And then he said uh, very quickly, uh, he said, I live just around the corner from you. And uh, he also declared, he says, I'm, I'm a practicing Christian. He mm. said, he was very upfront about it. Mm. I was not at all mm. um, a, a astonished or, you know, it, it was just very pleasant. And I felt that it is again that he here is someone who was so in alignment, in harmony with something higher. Uh, he was not so much coming across like a, a regular mm -hmm. personal social interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, so you were struck by the being, not by what he was doing. Not so consciously. No. It just manifested as an attraction, a liking for the presence of mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. 
I would not have used the word presence because I was not conscious of using that term at the time. Mm-hmm. But Trachtin, I liked his his company, and uh, he just declared, "Yes, I'm. Uh, I'll call myself a Christian." In fact, in the in the small apartment where I live, we use it as a church on Sundays even. So he was fully in, <laughs> and like this. Um, but uh, very quickly, somehow, we came to talk about. Uh, 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 Jesus Christ and his disciples and his life that he lived and the relevance of his life in in modern times for him and so on. And uh, I don't feel that it was a skill that he had. Mm. I just felt that somehow maybe here I was sufficiently open to not block him speaking. I was just very open listening because I also grew up in a very um, reasonable um, uh, a Christian community, not a community, but in a Christian way. Yep. Our country, very Christian country. Mm-hmm. And prior to me, Ken Michael, um, I used to go to church with my mother, you know, Seventh day Adventist church in Brixton in London. So I'm familiar very much with the life of Christ from mm-hmm. growing up from a, from a child or so. Me too. Yes, very good. Mm-hmm. So uh, we were not on um, unusual ground, but we got there very quickly. And I liked the way our talks were going because he was not trying to. I didn't have the sense there was any pressure because in London also we have a lot of a group um, called uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. There are people who also go from door to door. We we've got them as well. Yeah. Yes, yes. But I, I very rarely enjoyed their company because they definitely have an agenda and uh, they don't mind what your agenda is oh, like this so it's not a, li- a real invitation uh, not not so an invitation uh, yeah. so um uh, we just got along very well and i so much liked the conversation and uh, the 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 feeling of the conversation mm. that uh, i felt i knew i would see him again we never made any appointment we just Run into each other, or he'll come by knocking at the door or something. Because mm. I expressed to him, I'd love to see you again and talk mm. a bit more about this. Yeah. And so these these meetings went on for a, over a few months. We got more deeper and uh, enjoyable. Uh, so that even later, when he moved home from where he was living, and went maybe uh, two kilometers away. I found myself, he would come and talk and it was time for him to leave and then I walk him home, mm. using the, the walking as an opportunity to talk further um, like this. And we were just spinning up and then he walked me back up again. But and then we, we then, would do then, this. Then what happened? Mm. If I, you'll yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. Well, at some point this went on for a, a, a few months and yeah. then one, uh, maybe two months or so. Mm. But I remember one Sunday, one Sunday, he had come with another friend of his, and we sat in this in my room, in the room, in our, in our sitting room, and uh, we talked again. I cannot remember specifically about what we talked, and at the end, before leaving, um, I said to him, Michael, um, when you when you pray again, will you pray for me? And uh, he said, Sure, but why not now? And I liked it actually. Yeah. I said yes, yes. So I stood up, and he came, and he put his hand on my head, and he prayed. I don't remember what he said. I wish I'd recorded it. <laughs> remember? No, it wasn't really even about that. But no. at at the end of a very short prayer, you're not making long, long prayers, not elaborate prayers. Just prayed for for me. And at the end of the prayer, myself, I I, I said I made a prayer also, very short. So ask God, please, to um. To open up, to, I opened up to God and I said, uh, "I need your help you know, to to go more 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 deeply into what uh, uh, Michael's sharing, you know, and and what my heart is feeling." And it was short. And then after this, I, f- I felt so relief and light mm-hmm. and happy. And uh, we hugged at the at my door. Say, "Hey, thank you for this, and thank you. It's really good." We both felt very good. And then he left. He closed the door. And uh, I just had this incredible lightness. It was not new, but it was. It was not after going to church or something or whatever. It was a beautiful, pleasant lightness, and um, 
I, I, I felt I was very much in a state of being very comfortable in my own presence like that, something very, very still and peaceful, so profound and so noticeable for me, mm. that I just wanted to remain conscious of that feeling inside. And uh, by this time, I, I sat in the room for some time, and in just in this state of joy, you know, and lightness. I'm not normally thinking about many things, but definitely in this moment, I was not thinking about anything. And, um, and then, then of course, the evening is closing down, and uh, but I didn't feel like going to sleep, and I didn't want to go to sleep. Mm. I didn't want to miss this. I was taking every soaking up every mm, everything about this moment and uh, then i felt at one point a, a sleep came and i went to the next room and i f- just fell asleep and uh, in the morning i woke up I, I i often share this thing that there was a little little space between the curtains and the sunlight was coming into the room and i was very I, it's almost uh, i was quite empty it was just looking at this light coming in, mm. little dust particles in the light, but it has. It was much more than that. It was more that I was looking at that, but all the feeling was internal for me. It was like there was just this beautiful. It was still there. Uh, oh yes! Oh yes! Oh yes! Yeah, yeah. Because the reason why I uh, hesitated to go to sleep because I mm. felt if I go to sleep, wake up, it probably yeah. will not be yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. It has happened before. Yeah. I woke up and there was still this. I was still in this. So in hindsight, right. you could say this was a kind of giving direction towards what you had to do in life. Uh, I don't know if I'd call it a direction. Then at that point, it felt just um, that well, everything I could possibly want has been satisfied somehow. So it's a kind of a homecoming. Could you say that? Uh, yeah, you could use this term, the homecoming. Uh, it felt I felt totally comfortable and without any desire for anything, mm. and uh, just felt very comfortable. And uh, went out walking, and uh, it was there in the walking. Went to the park. It was it was here, you know? and a tremendous peace uh, was felt in my being. And uh, it has never gone away. Actually, it's never gone away. It has never gone away. Wow. Wow, and so many adventures has happened, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and uh, do 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 do, and, uh, yeah. but it's still yeah. been the, and, and the then, underlying. Experience. If you allow me, then then another quite important point in your life was meeting Papaji yes. in India, and I well, you told it yourself in one of the uh, one of the satsangs that you. It's it's even on YouTube, eh? Mm. When we yes. see you yeah. when you come up to Papaji. Mm-hmm. But then, if I recall it correctly, you went away outside because you also felt a little bit confronted by him by. Uh, oh, that was his that name was only well from the very first time of uh, 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 really sitting in Papaji's presence. Um, there, there is a a kind of awe, you know, a kind of mm. like. I felt it's not something imagined. It was uh, mm. it, the presence felt very tangible. It was not different. It's not so different from what I was feeling, mm. but it felt like there was some kind of urgency. You understand like this? Yeah. It felt something mm-hmm. more, more like something is going to happen. Yeah, you can already like I, I had this morning. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, something. I felt something yeah. is going to happen, but yeah. I was not projecting what that could be. It, it just uh, being in there, like many people also in satsang. I felt that they they came for the same mm. something. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't discuss with anyone what they're there for. Uh, I knew that I was called there, not by a letter or something, just by some urge. And um, so, um, being in Papaji's presence, there was this kind of urge in me, an urge. I say in me because there are many people also in satsang, and. Uh, they they seem to have time for uh, a social life and things like that also alongside satsang and traveling to see sometime other teachers or whatever but i was there at the same time i was not 
totally comfortable with him. Mm. And uh, when you're feeling like that, you project it's something to do with him. Yeah. But uh, more the, the 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 power of his presence would be mm, maybe it was like a light shining inside, in, and uh, you becoming more aware that there was there was something more to find, you know, like this. And that's what happened. That's what happened. Mm. Would you? I um, I have a totally different question, which mm. is really yeah, yeah. Go, I am. I will go anyway. <laughs> anyway, we go. Uh, and the question is about um, is it really about myself? Um, I told you already in the introduction. Uh, my deepest longing is to be free. Yes, as free as the self can be, and to experience inner peace. However, the psychological mind wants to get me into personhood, and in my daily life. Work and people act me to react on things, ask me to react on things. And honestly, the person, Frank, wants to be in the circus of life, yes. contributing to the development of humankind. Yes. And not, as a contrast, sitting on a mountain seeking for truth. So my question is, how can I be really free in the duality of the world we live in? Yes. Can we look at this for a moment, just to... Um, it seemed like it was slowly falling down. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. Um, this distance is okay. Yeah, very good. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. very good. Yeah, very very important. Just back up a sentence or so, and the question is, how can I? Be really free in the duality of the world we live in, also from my deepest longing to contribute to the development of humankind. Yes. Um, well, it will depend on different things. Um, simple. Uh, one is our urge to contribute to the development of humankind uh, can either be uh, driven by a personal mm-hmm. or a subjective outlook. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's one thing. Yep. That things you see in life and you feel within your own personal um, expression. I would like to change that. I'd like to contribute to whatever it may be. And it may be very noble causes uh, and uh, like that. Um, and then there is, um, in the state of awakened consciousness, the the subjective personal outlook may may get integrated into a, a, a deeper unexpected um, uh, not unrelated mm-hmm. not unrelated uh, but it can also be very different from the personal projection but whatever it is you will know in, intuitively it is higher and it is very strongly supported by the the totality of consciousness. You just know it like that. No? In that state, the duality of the world will not trouble you, because it will not be a personal subjective mission. It will be an expression um, supported by the totality, actually. I understand. Yeah. Having said that, you know, Whatever you do in your life that has brought you joy and a sense of uh, authenticity um, is supported uh, by, by that, that uh, consciousness also, you see. Mm. 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 It's just when I mention that, because at some point you may find that uh, from the very personal, intentional perspective, there is the, the urge, I need to do this, and we may ask for divine support on it, but it's still to fulfill a personal mm. um, perspective. Mm. But uh, even prior to that, even before you reach that stage, um, uh, in your um, being prepared for something, expression, yeah. the first preparation would be 
to um, to transcend the limitations of personal identity. Mm-hmm. That's the deeper calling. Yeah, and then understand that fully. But then this psychological mind is my servant, as you call it, not my master. But in my case, he's often the master, which makes it quite a challenge. Only because of the the status you give you give that mind. Mm. Mm. You see, um, <laughs> mind mind cannot work for itself. And so actually, it's the it's a relationship. Because you no mean th- mind cannot work for itself because I give it meaning. No, well, no thought. Um, I mean, there's no entity called mind. It's like a flow of thought, no, mm-hmm. and and no thought. Uh, I, I sometimes say is self-employed. It can only come alive in a relationship of the the thinker and the thinker's thought. So when we have a strong idea of this is me and this is what I believe, this is a uh, more um, personal. Nothing is only personal. There's no such thing. Even there's no entity called a person actually. Can, uh, please can I carry on a little yeah, bit. Please, please, no please in, do. Please there's do. no independent entity called personal. The, actually, what is, is the divine consciousness. And that's what you are. That's what we all are, is that divine consciousness. But somehow, in this level of its expression, mm-hmm. on this earth, um, it manifests in the form, in, in, in the body. It's, 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 um, its temporary housing is in this body, although it is permanent, the, the vessel is uh, temporary. And it projects itself. It projects itself as a personal entity. That personal entity is still a mode of consciousness, but it has been imbued with the with the sense of autonomy, to to think its own thoughts and to project its own ideas and so on. It's still consciousness, and even the personal consciousness sits inside the great consciousness. Okay. That's what you call the theater of consciousness. <laughs> yeah, we could use, we could yeah. use like this, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now, now I understand. I understand. What you what you have said pointed out earlier was um, uh, the the person is in the body, but the body is in the consciousness. Yes, uh, um, the consciousness is in the body also, and it's also outside of the body. Mm. That then that brings me to the third subject I uh-huh. would like to talk to you about and that's about consciousness I just said I'm incurably um, interested in consciousness yeah um, let me see I, I let me share a little bit what I know mm-hmm. and then uh, come to my question because what I learned and experienced so far is that you cannot observe consciousness mm-hmm. because you are consciousness mm-hmm. It's the source of being and the source of every creation. It cannot be found by the human being, although it can be experienced. And the stillness of being, for instance, via the invitation, I've experienced it. You've said in many ways, in your pointings, using all kinds of metaphors, such as the eye as a metaphor for consciousness, the eye can see everything but not itself, Mm. and the knife can cut everything but itself. Mm. Is it possible to be in this state of being permanently and still functioning in the world of interaction. Yes. It is the only thing, the only part of yourself which is permanent. So, <laughs> so, so the, <laughs> the person, the person, uh, the person come and yeah. go and change. Yeah. That's why I say there's no permanent person. Yeah. You know? The yeah. person is also yeah. a state of mind. So the Frank of today was is different from the Frank from 10 years ago. That's yes, 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 in, in its own self-perception. No? Mm. Uh, that frank consciousness is connected to, it cannot exist independent of consciousness, mm. but mm. it may not be aware of its root as consciousness. When you are aware of yourself as consciousness, beyond thinking about it, this is why satsang is so important, because it becomes your mm, your natural state, recognized. We say recognized, then I had one more word, I said, a non-dual recognition, mm. not one thing recognizing another thing. Because and I give they... different examples for that. 
that people find helpful because it's, how can you know recognition means one thing recognizing another thing mm-hmm. so how can consciousness recognize itself if it's only itself no hmm. well it's that's different a pu- that's a puzzle my mind can't get a, a can't solve so the mind cannot solve it no. but it still will be solved to the extent that it will not be troubled anymore yeah. because it's so absolutely natural You see, the mind see, oh wow, that is too far out, that is too extreme. But I said, no, no, it is extremely simple. More than simple. Then what makes it such a, a difficult thing to just be? Because uh, the person is not a state of just be. This is a person is a state of consciousness. Is not uh, is not easy with just be. It has the idea just to be, but it's more into becoming. It's a restless um, state, and it uh, even it's trying to become the consciousness even. Yep. At the at the highest yep. expression of itself, yep. I'm trying to get back to consciousness. Um, but 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 then Nuji, I I got a serious question. I've I've really examined brain and. It it appears to be that we have about sixty to seventy thousand thoughts a day, mm-hmm. daily. That's not the problem. The problem is that we have them the next day again, and then ninety five percent of them are the same. Mm-hmm. So that's how conditioning starts. But what I wanted to address to you is there are so many thoughts mm-hmm. coming through the mind, and I know, mm-hmm. I know, I have to be empty, 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 empty to to really come in the state of being the consciousness to be empty you don't have to get rid of the thoughts mm. okay please tell you should be very happy to hear that because <laughs> yeah. nobody can get rid of <laughs> yeah. them yeah yeah so uh, they it's it's good that they still there but well good it, <laughs> they are there they, they, they no they're not really there they're up, they're here they appear here and they're in in your in your conscious field they're there What makes them so uh, molesting and so troublesome? Because we like to have thoughts if they serve us all the time. If they were yep. only nice, yep. they're good. And you say, "Thought, go over there and get me something." Thought, tot, 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 get. But it doesn't work like that. Yeah. You know, it doesn't work. Thankfully, it doesn't work. Because if it did work like that, you would have no urge to find your higher thing, which is beyond thought. Mm. Hmm? So, so in that so case, yeah, okay. we come back uh, to this point. Uh, um, how then to um, um, you don't have to fight uh, the thoughts as yet. Stay with me on this one. First thing is to be aware that uh, you have to be aware of the thoughts for them to have any meaning to you. Yeah. You must already be there. You are there before the thoughts come. You are there because there are some thoughts that's going to come. Maybe another one's going to come in a minute that is not presently here, and it floats up into the consciousness. Ah, oh, yes, about this thing, okay. And you may engage with that thought for a little while, and then it will also go, and you'll also be be able to say, now that thought is gone. So it is a visitor, and it visits you, meaning the, the consciousness, which is aware of the thought. But if the consciousness has strong its personal identity, the thought has more magnetism mm-hmm. for that. I Not all that. thoughts, because you may say how many thousands of thoughts visit, they can't stay. Why? Because you have no particular interest in them. Sure. They're just like they come and go. The ones that trouble you are the ones that you are interested in. Either the ones that you love or hate. That's the that's the food for them and they will keep coming. But what they are attached to is not the pure consciousness, but the idea of a personal self, which itself is the main thought. The main thought, the magnet thought, is the sense I am Frank, I am Muji, and that has a that has a that's like the ground, and then other thoughts can relate to my Muji idea of self also. Please press me on it because if yeah, I, you get through this, it's it's, yeah. it's a very good thing. Yeah. Uh. Then you say, this Muji or this Frank, let's let's mm. take myself. It's just a vehicle. 
of the consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's There's an expression. No. It's an expression of the consciousness. Yes, yes, yes. But not more than that. Uh, in, and if I make in, that in, my identity, then I limit myself enormously. Yes. You have, must have evolved to a level where those questions become appealing to you. Not everyone is at that the same stage of interest, you see. You already, in your journey of consciousness, from, say, person to presence, right. you are sufficiently in your journey that these kind of quests and questions are becoming oh, more conscious for you and are attractive to you. But that means that there are different levels of consciousness. Yes, there's one consciousness, but there are levels of, um, you may say, um, the way in which it manifests. The mm -hmm. same one consciousness that is very strongly identified with personhood and very tormented by personhood, the same consciousness at a certain stage is perfect, actually. But it's perfect there also, but when it's projected very strongly, with this belief, I am this body, I am this person, I'm a man, I'm a woman, I'm a doctor, I'm whatever it is, when it's strongly identified with um, some uh, desire or intention or, uh, or self-image, yeah. then the consciousness serves that self-image. And that self-image consciousness is having relationship with other concepts that is attracted for it for a while. But what is actually searching for ultimately is to be at rest and to be happy, to be in harmony. But that's what I've, I feel every living being is in search of that. It's just that at a certain stage of our identity, we give a different face to that. You may say, no, I'm going to get that true family, or I'm going to get that true money, I'm going to get that true fame, I'm going to get that true power, I'm going to get that true beauty, I'm going to, you see, like this. And so we go through, and we have been through already so many stages that you have had to you reject them because they did not give you this. What you're searching is for a happiness that doesn't come and go, a stable. Because you know, and why you're searching for that? Because in your original nature, which is behind the, the facade of personhood, you are that. Mm. Mm. Actually, we are searching for ourselves as we are originally. And then you remind me of, I'm, I'm called Frank, I'm Franciscus, and my baptized name, mm -hmm. of Franciscus who said, where you're looking for is where you're looking from. Yes, yes. That's where you're referring to. Yes. But is then what you're referring to, what you would say the truth? If I, if I say my, my deepest longing is to be free, is then the... The, the awareness of being consciousness, living consciously, the way to be free? You are already the perfect consciousness that you're searching for. Yeah. No, I, I, I understand what you say. Conceptually, I understand. We have to move beyond conceptually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because for me, satsang is very practical. Yeah. And this so. is why um, this guidance is given to how to how to come back to that original um, natural awareness of oneself. Because we only can move away from it in the mind. You cannot move away from it. Because you it, are. It's, because it's infinite. Yeah. Muji, please believe me, I understand it fully, but it's too much in my mind. So I have to, and I okay, have, the, okay. and I have these moments. Ab mm -hmm. Absolutely, I know mm -hmm. by experience where you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But what I would like to do is to, to, for that to be yeah. beyond doubt. Yes, and be even beyond belief. It just yes, is. yes, yes. Exactly that. I'm up for that. <laughs> yeah, me yes. too. <laughs> yes. Uh, now also, if it's possible, actually. Yeah, please. Yes. Mm. Because intellectual understanding yeah. um, is is not it. It's helpful at a certain stage, but uh, but we can just go on feeling I know, I know, I know, rather than I am, I am, I am. We can feel like this. We know, and that is not satisfactory for for me also. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I see, because I have the opportunity to sit with many people um, who come uh, with certain things that they say, yes, I, I know I'm not the person, I know I'm the self, but at the same time, uh, there is great inconsistency in their expression, you see? So, and as oftentimes when we come to actually look, we see that there is resistance and fear also. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it comes like that. But uh, my statement stand that you are this already. Now you say, I know this intellectually, but how can I realize this now? Mm-hmm. And, and once again, I, I, did, I, do re- I do know what, it's, what it feels like. So I have had the experiences several times, but at, at our instant moments, at our uh, minutes or. Or the experience you have of awakening are not complete because you are seeing them as like a, like a, as an action happened as a, a happening mm-hmm. okay more important than the happening even the highest happening is that which witnesses it as a happening okay and any happening you see is impermanent watch from the permanent this I can feel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. if you had a beautiful, this, oh, whoa, oh, 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 people like this, no? Yeah. Oh, 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 <laughs> thank you, Baba Ji. <laughs> whoa, whoa, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Praise the Lord. Like this. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And yeah. uh, I'm not celebrating with them. No, because you know they're witnessing something, so they're not. They're witnessing and experiencing mm. something. Mm-hmm. And perhaps the mind, from what we are thought, you know, to say that, ah, this one is experiencing awakening, like that, and it is connected also, that joy, that, but there is still an identity that is owning that experience. That I am having. This, oh, this is happening to me. So, so in the very ultimate truth, uh, exists in in that really now, there is no emotion. There is no. Emotion. No, emotions can be there. Everything can be there. But also the weakness of them is there. More than them. We see, we overlook the, the, the weakness of whatever it may be. We're going to come to it. Yeah. Right now, yes, yes. We overlook it because we feel, no, we, we take the experience, the feeling, the dynamic and beautiful and yeah. exhilarating experience of joy and bliss and oh, like this, that that is it. But um, that is strongly a fragrance of that. But all things experienced will gradually transform and I had to slow down again and some people go, oh yeah I lost it or mm. you know why did it go away mm. and I say don't worry about this more important than that is that you see it's the, you feel that exp- you are putting on that experience that this is how I like to stay mm-hmm. but if you are staying in that bliss you probably burn out <laughs> <laughs> no, no it's okay it's like it's yeah. whew, like, yeah. like this you know yeah. And there's very much still a sense of a person in that experience, just feeling very, very happy and thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I can recall a few very important instances of that happening and to show what really was not being recognized. You see? Mm -hmm. So um, if I see someone who somehow is as though the person dropped for a while, and is replaced by uh, tremendous exuberance and joy. And, and uh, I'm not against that. It's beautiful to see it. No? But I know it's coming also. That for a while, don't disturb that. Say, okay, they enjoy for a bit. And then they come and they say, oh, you know, Babaji, yesterday was so amazing, amazing. I'd like to go back to that. And I say, no, 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 there's no need. Pay attention to that which witnesses that experience. Hmm? But itself was not altered. This is very. This is not what people are wanting. You see, they're not what their mind is wanting. The mind is thinking, no, it's a hallelujah state. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm saying yes, yes, but the hallelujahs um, is not a one-time hallelujah. You're hallelujahing mm-hmm. for quite a long time, mm-hmm. but there is something that uh, 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 that is present. The experience, um, what I call that which is the self, 
is not fluctuating. It's, it's, it, it shines as pure joy and peace. And uh, harmony is a good word here. It's mm. a harmony. It's a field of harmony. And it has no end. I know that sounds, whoa, what is that? And it like? has no ambition. It has no. It, it needs no ambition. Mm. It no. needs being complete. It, what, um, what could it be ambitioning for? Mm. It, it, it is complete. It's, mm. it's rest and peace. So some people, uh, they, they are attached to or addicted to um, states of uh, tremendous, exhilarated states like that. But at a certain point, and many of them come back and say, you know, Babaji, I'm not looking for, however high the states are, I'm not interested in anything that come and go. And that's a little bit further on. You see, another one might hear that and go, "No, no, no! I really want that." So this is where uh, people may appear to vary. What do you mean? You you reach that stage, you don't want it. I say, whatever you perceive through the mind and the senses are temporary states, watched and experienced in the permanent. The permanent state. That is not also. I'm I'm using words at the moment. I know, and I, I want to demonstrate with you mm-hmm. that which you are asking about. Yeah. And then, but the, the challenge is not to listen to you from the mind. So if I listen from my heart, I understand fully. What you, you are aware of mind. Is. You are aware of mind. Mm-hmm. So when you know or feel it, an understanding is more mental. There's something which is not mind and is not caught That's up true. in that. That's so there's, that I call the space of awareness. Yeah. Hmm. That's nice that you make that distinction. Yeah. yeah, I can feel that. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, if you continue to 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 see that whatever arises, beautiful or not beautiful, are fleeting states, visiting states. They come and go. Like the sky and. Uh, all your thoughts, emotions, memories, projections, uh, they're like clouds uh, floating in that limitless expanse called the sky. Your consciousness is like the sky. I'm not talking about sky out there. I'm mm-hmm. talking where you're looking from. Where you're looking from, if you don't give a shape to it, mm-hmm. if you don't say, OK, this is me, Frank, looking at something. Yep. No? Yeah. Um, but just there's just looking in which the, the, your self image might come up, and other images may come, and you you can see mm. that they they come and go. They come and go. There's something constant actually. Mm? The thing which is constant is greater than the idea of Frank. That's actually uh, more true of you. And Frank wants to be more there. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Frank is always somewhere else. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. It, yeah. it, we can say it. Mm, mm. It includes Frank, and way beyond the, the limited conceptual conceptions of Frank. That which you dearly love mm. more than anything, and yeah. which and if everything is in it. Yeah. Absolutely. Is there some fear when we speak? No, like no, this? absolutely not. No, 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 absolutely not. I feel very comfortable, and uh, but I, I really feel what you're saying, mm, and I don't have to say but, but, and how to be more. The, the question is not being mind. asked by it. But by the identity that you associate with, yes, that true. feels true. In true. my present state, I yep. would like to be more yep. in my stable state. Yep. Yep. But these are also exactly. thoughts and sensations arising in the stable state, which is where you actually that's where you're looking from. You're looking always. You're looking is supplied. The energy of looking is supplied by the, the, the by your total state. But is funneled into an identity that is also a projection, also. Yep. And it, this idea of yourself, has projected a life with lots of things, also, which it thinks are outside there, 
but from the real place, the idea you held of yourself is also a projection inside this space that you're, you're here also looking for. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me quiet. Yeah. It's totally peaceful there. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that, oh, and now we must be quiet because it's got nothing to do with it. There are times when speaking will happen, laughter will happen, even expressions of rage, oh, but it doesn't touch it actually. Mm. And it, it can be natural for these expressions just to come and happen. See, what is unnatural and, and false is to feel that now, okay, I have to behave as it. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. Because yeah. it is not behaving. No, it is. Nor yeah. misbehaving. Yeah. It, it, it just is. Yeah. And then when you uh, are totally clear, not here, but you are the, clair- the clarity itself, then you don't have to be so much policing, you know, because that is the God of life. Mm. And it, uh, the way life flows from your integral beingness is there's a harmony there that the mind cannot govern it. It doesn't have to control or to plan or to strategize life. It is life. And at the same time, it is the witness to life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How far you want to go with this? As far as you... I'm allow ready. me to. Yeah, yeah. As far as you allow me to, would you? I would. Yeah. Hmm. In hearing these things we are talking about, who are you to yourself right now in this moment? It's okay, just be honest. How do you feel yourself to be? Who are you? I hope I understand your okay, question. Don't touch past. Mm-hmm. Don't touch past, and uh, or anything projected like future, mm-hmm. because these are clearly from the mind also, no? Like, okay, I used to do this. I'm doing this. I like this. I don't like this, and what I want to do is this, because this is how the mind oscillates between past and future, no? And of course, there's something that is aware of this oscillation. Like now, when we're having a conversation like this, is probably very rare for many people to be looking. Like we're not talking about out there and up there and over there. We're talking here. What what really is here, from the from the looking out place, and everything you've looked at, whatever you've experienced or remember or believed, they've come and gone. Everything come and go. Yeah. Now nothing that you perceive through the mind. Uh, that is uh, any form or shape or belief. Nothing has ever come and just stayed. Even the idea of Frank also. Because if you were to write a, an autobiography, you had a, a project to write a short biography of, you know, in, in one A4 page, at different times, it would probably come out different. Because Frank are various moods that he's um, held together. By a belief, the strong belief, I am, I am this. Mm-hmm. But really, what you are is, uh, is the pure consciousness, which you say you, in the form of Frank, is searching for this consciousness. You are also the consciousness, who is aware of Frank, strongly trying to get back to consciousness, get back to you. Mm-hmm. And now your question again, because you had a very good question. You just ask me the question, Who are you to yourself? If there was no one else in the world that you have to describe yourself to, who are you unto yourself right now? Now, The first thing that pops up is love and light. That's the two words that come up. Okay. Love and light... Beautiful, 
are also perceivable. You perceive the energy of love, or the thought of love, and even light is perceived in consciousness, by consciousness. Hmm. You are able to observe uh, or to experience the, the, the feeling of love, the sense of love, mm-hmm. the greatest idea about love, mm-hmm. the atmosphere of love, and light. No? Something is aware even of light and love. Yes or no? Well, this Jain, um, the German would say yes and no. Um, I thought, and maybe I'll come back, but maybe you always talk about God and the way I. The, 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 I've got a lot of people around me who find that a difficult word. Okay. And then I came up with a kind of synonymous, and that is my love, light, or life are maybe, in my opinion, or it may, may feel the same as God. Yes. You can, and if you read the Bible and you read not God, but you read light or life yes, or yes. love, even God, even God for some people is uh, uh, some idea in the mind also. Yeah, but what I was trying to to explain is that if you say that I have also, I'm also observing love mm-hmm. and light, mm-hmm. so I'm not love and light. Mm. You're subtler than them to observe them, because love and light are not observing you. You're determining what they are. Who are you who is doing this? You are the that which perceives love, or light, or space. Beautiful, beautiful, um, uh, not metaphors, but beautiful metaphors is fine. Hmm? They are also, you know, so if to say now, Love is sort of somehow falling away. You are still here to say, but love is kind of diminishing, or the light is fading. So you cannot be that. So who am I? Who am I then? Well, it's not going to be a mental question, no. because whatever you say, it's not. It's also just going to be a concept about something observed within the the reality you are to see that. Don't look to the mind for the answer of this. Because whatever shows up in the mind, it is something here that watches the mind and say, "No, I don't agree with that, and I cannot say that's a limitation or something." Then it has to do with inner peace. Another quality, beautiful. Yeah, mm. but I think whatever word I use, it's not. Yes. Does that mean that you are not? If there's no word to convey. This, no. So, oh, so sorry, I have no word for it, which is probably more true, no? Yeah. Suppose there was absolutely no word to describe. You know, I'm yes, I'm looking at everything. I'm looking. I'm looking at dreams and feelings and thoughts and the sense of future and you, Muji, or you. This way. I'm see oh, everything I can see, and remember also, and forget all this. There's awareness of it. But that which is aware of all of this, where is it? And who are you? Are you apart from that awareness? No, I, I can feel that I'm not a part of it. But to is it merely a feeling? No, it's a being. It's, hmm? a, it's a being. It's it's yes. yes. It's being means it is. It's it not is. on. It, does it belong to past, no. future, or present? No, it is now. Now, okay. Mm-hmm. But everything I try because I wanted to give you an answer. You asked me a question. Um, <laughs> a response, not necessarily. Maybe an an, an okay. answer. You know, I'm, it's not tricked at all. I'm no, totally no, no, no. no I don't feel it that way. I don't feel our that way. our introspections mm-hmm. at the moment. It is mm-hmm. very, very good. Well, rarely have I had the opportunity to speak with someone who come to say we want to interview to be looking like that. Mm. We're looking together. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, it makes me very humble. 
Mm-hmm. But you being what? Who is humble? Yeah, that's also. I'm looking at someone who's humble. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I I, <laughs> I think I fully can follow you, but answer the question. You see, I am not looking for a shape where you say, "Ah, oh, this is it." This, because if you say it's this, I say, uh, "What this?" You're seeing this. So if I throw it away, you have I thrown you away? No, no. If your answer is right or wrong, does anything happen to you who perceive it? You can say, yeah, that was not true. Yeah. There's almost like there's a sort of a fear, maybe, in, in, the, in the human um, expression of consciousness, that I cannot be nothing. Because it's nothing. Hmm? <laughs> it feels like nothing. <laughs> and I think we're there where you... Nah, it's, it's empty. It's, it's empty. empty is good. Yeah, it's empty. Yeah, it's there. But where, it's empty. where, there, where, everywhere. Here. What about here? Also. Also there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, perhaps if we are looking for um, a, a world. Which will understand you at this level, I wouldn't bother. If we are looking for a response from life that will recognize you at this level, uh, that's already a big mistake. Everything, everything, all life. Only appeared to you, mm. including Frank and Muji, and Muji, <laughs> and everything else, yeah. even the word consciousness. Mm. Then, then forgive me to ask you. I think it's a question from the mind, but you referred to it in the past. I th- I think, correct me if I'm wrong, it's from Sri Ramana Marashi, but one says, the eye becomes the eye, still remains the eye. The, the, the eye? Becomes the eye, yeah. still remains the eye. Yeah. That's the saying. Yes. And, and you once explained it in a sad sack. And I didn't dare to ask you in Samar, because it was very much on my, my longing to ask you, but there were so many people, and I thought, well, for later. <laughs> Didn't know that this was going to happen. But but if we put it into and I if we put it into our talk as we do right now, then it's about sense making. If I already at I'm I'm already it. So I'm as a metaphor, I'm already at home. Then I go away. I mm. become the I. You, you I, go away and I become. Let's say I'm already the I. Yeah. So let's let's make the metaphor. That's my home. Okay. So I'm at home. Now I'm going to make the humankind journey. So I become the I. I do all my work sitting in front of you, and I come back to know that I am who I already was. Mm-hmm. Come home again. Then what's the sense? Of going away anyway, mm-hmm. since all I can come up, mm-hmm. all I can find is what I'm already are. Yeah, it's it's an interesting question because what I would say, because I've heard it enough times. Well, I mean, what's the point of the whole of life and the purpose of going and doing all these things if I am just what I am? It, it's still expressed and addressed from a, a personal place that to say that, you know, because. The self has no issue with that at all. Mm. All this diverse manifestation, to, including the mosquitoes that landed on this place, everything is its play also. Us sitting, talking about it is also inside the great consciousness. And uh, everything has its place. If we feel, but knowing this, what's the point of life? 
I, I don't have this thing uh, because actually sitting in satsang with people is also life. People leaving because they think, well, I didn't get that. I don't really agree with this. It's also part of it. Is I, I'm okay with this also. I don't take it personally, hmm. but at the same time, I do not dismiss it, and I'm not cynical about life at all. As a matter of fact, I feel I'm much more present with life. Hmm. You see, but the, the ambitions that were sprouting out of an egoic um, self-portrait. That will drop away, of course, for everybody, gradually, gradually. And I say, do not be afraid of that, because you cannot be less than you are, actually. Mm. And you will find there's so much more range for you in terms of your expression, but it's not, uh, you're not gripped by desire, and I've got to do this, I've got to prove myself. There's nothing like this. And yet you're in total balance and harmony mm. within your being. Mm. But what I find, but when I asked the questions, mm. we got out of the experience we just had, B- being Ed, so we get we came all the way to nothing. Then I asked this question: mm. the mind goes again. Mm-hmm. You give a beautiful answer, mm. but I also go away from the source. I never leave the source. You never leave the source. You imagine you did. Ah, well, God, then it, at least it feels differently. What least what feels differently? If I'm going to ask the, the question I ask you, yes, was a mental question, and just before that we were in this holy space, in my belief. Yeah, but it's not changed. But it's not changed. Yeah, that's oh, that's no. your message. It's always there. It's always well, there. I am always here. You are always here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As sure. this, the thing is, what happened is that we have come into a place where we. It's as though we are on the we are on the bridge of intellectual into actuality or something exactly. like that. Exactly, right? that's what, exactly what I try to express. Yeah, yes. it can feel like this. Yeah. Um, the idea that I'm trying to remain as consciousness becomes redundant. Yeah. Because there's there's no doubt. There's not even the need to believe it anymore. Mm. That is natural, you see. It's not like if I say, "Yeah, I got to keep on trying to remember I'm consciousness," and that may be useful at some stage, if the play of remembering and forgetting is very strong. Sometimes you feel naturally, Phew. "I don't talk to me about consciousness, man, right now, because I've got a lot, so much things on my mind right now. I can't be thinking like that. I'm not ready for that." That's also an expression people experience. But so it's uh, all okay. It, huh? So it's all okay. It's all an expression. No, only when seen from the, the 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 unity, the wholeness, then you can say they're just expressions. They mean nothing. But when you believe in the expression, mm. then actually you it becomes your you, reality. You live, you live yeah. with the tax of that identity. Yeah. I understand. I understand. I was uh, two times participating in a silent retreat. Mm-hmm. I was impressed by what happened during the days in terms of energy. Yeah. The quietness, the calmness that took yeah. the beautiful satsangs. What's the power of stillness? The power of stillness is really revealed when there's no one being still. Stillness is not a practice. If, if you, we talk about, a, we're going to have a, suppose someone said, we're going to have a, a satsang today on stillness. Okay? <laughs> Sounds funny. <laughs> it's funny, no? You, you, you say, I'm trying to be still. It's like, today we're going to try to be space. <laughs> it was space already here. You know, um, I'm going to, we're, we're going to do a thing on stillness. We are inviting the mind in the form of the person to do an experience an expression or an exercise to become what we are fundamentally. Stillness doesn't move out the way to say, okay, there's some groups coming in trying to be still. Stillness also is not something external. And when when we use stillness, actually it's just another synonym for yourself. Stillness is not an act, it's not a doing. It points to just Mm. what is Mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay. Mm. We had a wonderful welcome when we came here yesterday. Uh, it was really magical. 
And at the end of the day, Luz asked me, what did, what, what struck you the most? And Kayani brought us to the Shiva temple, but also brought us to the Christian Christ temple. temple. Yeah. And as you know, I've been raised Christian, yes. Catholic. Uh, I was, I'm very connected to the story of Jesus. Yes. And there I found well, a, a magical place. That's the first thing. But mm -hmm. then I was very much struck by the painting of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And you've painted it yourself on a stone wall. Mm -hmm. And what struck me most was his eyes. I've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. Such a vivid, alive eyes. Mm -hmm. So I thought, if I have the opportunity, I have to ask you, what happened when you were painting that painting? Or mm -hmm. is that not the right question? No, it's a good question, but nothing happened. I just painted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's 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 a beautiful, <laughs> it's a beautiful. Well, all I can say, I mean, I cannot, I cannot take some big credit. I, I feel what happened is just like yourself. As you um, get more familiar and self-accepting of your true state, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, wonderful things are showing up actually that are not in the hands of the person necessarily. It is the expression of the harmony of the self. So uh, I don't go there and look and say, "Oh, the eyes of Jesus are really good," or not like that. <laughs> no, I'm happy when people go. No, 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 because yeah. actually, what is there is like this. This painting happened, yeah, and uh, I, I see that it is imbued with some graces there, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'm very pleased that uh, uh, many beings go go and 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 sit. There mm -hmm. and feel a deep seen sense of peace. Mm -hmm. I did not create that peace. No, that but peace is there. It's a peace in my heart also. It's the same peace. Mm. Is that? It's the same peace in you also. What uh, what maybe the work does is 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 it becomes like a mirror reflecting the peace in you. Mm. Mm. Then. For sure, you have a beautiful peace in you. <laughs> it's it's the reflected. same peace, not a piece of peace. It's, a, no, it's the same peace. peace. Muji, mm. um, go a little bit to uh, the end of the beautiful uh, interview. Um, that's more related to the world outside. Um, there is a lot of suffering. We have uh, people around us who are severely ill. Um, for some people, life is pretty tough and for those who is searching for truth or like me it may sound also as a luxury um, for the privileged one such as me what how do you um, reflect on people dealing with illness with tough things to take into yes to be honest with you, in the Sangha field, yeah, there are many people come, we see so much sickness come up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes sickness come up because in a way we are carrying some sickness in us, you know. And some of it is very strongly connected to our our inner identity and patterns and things we suppress and so on. They, some sickness are triggered by that also. Mm -hmm. And also, I would say that uh, we this prep for some people, their sickness has also been a privilege. In what sense? In the sense that uh, when we are healthy and blah, 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 we are in the world and we have lost so much ambition and things for the world, and oftentimes not just sickness but challenging situation, crisis, helps you to turn inside. Mm -hmm. Because without this, while we are in the, in the youth of life and all this, your mind goes only for things which are ephemeral and momentary. So not just sickness, mm -hmm. but uh, even the collapse of a relationship or difficulties that come in life, they are, they are, they are perceived uh, by people like, oh, it's so sad, it's so bad. But many people, many sages uh, experience these states which would help them to turn within and to really discover not just believe you know oh yes mm. i agree and i think i'm kind they really had to find it there are some people also they were coming to satsang here they couldn't kind of anymore they had to stay home and they found this at home 
away from the noise of the world and all the beautiful friends and so on. They had to find and not not dis, not create this, mm-hmm. but to discover this mm-hmm. inside. You know, and much more so perhaps than even sitting in a sangha field with uh, fifty other people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, we look on sickness or hardship like that. But uh, if the world was just full of sensory enjoyments and stuff, nobody would wake up. So I don't have exactly that feeling that you know. Of course, no one will choose sickness. You don't want sickness. It's part of life, or difficulties, or losing your job, or or you know, uh, breaking your knee, and you have mm-hmm. to stay off work, and you have a lot of work coming to do, and you just think, oh, this is the worst thing I'm having in my life. It could be the best thing that's happening for your inner life also. It doesn't have to be like that, mm-hmm. but sometimes strong measures come for strong situations to to, yeah, to revert I back. Can recall, <laughs> I yeah. can relate to that as well. So yes, yeah. yeah. So whether it takes the form of sickness or the loss of a job or you mm-hmm. know or whatever, mm-hmm. it does uh, help us to break the the the, the fancy the fantasy trips. Yeah. In London, where I lived for so long. You know, I've been to funerals where maybe a young person was shot and killed or something like this, and their friends have never seen a dead body. And they go to a funeral and they see a corpse of somebody that they know like this, and uh, they are in a state of samadhi. You know what I mean by that? They're in a state of deep introversion mm-hmm. and and almost a a deep oneness of a harmony. You know. Of course, in society we say, "Oh, you know, like you know, they're in shock and all this." But actually, in that moment, they're not thinking about the party next weekend, or about who they're going to go with, or about Nike shoes and nothing like that. They're in a state actually that the world often misunderstands. Actually, mm-hmm. that you come to a place of real introvertedness, yeah. and 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 unity and harmony. We wrongly label it actually. Hmm. So and for some people, that's where their life begins to change in a in a in a deeper way. Yeah. So in that respect, it's always an invitation, opportunity. Yeah. And a, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Thank you, Mujibaba. <laughs> I would love you to finish it off. <laughs> Because help. I sense then that help yeah then help can, can you help me a little bit totally offered totally offered and I'm ready you know to finish it off well to finish off uh, where the mind is uh, is uh, in you are you are so much higher than the mind can mm-hmm. give you the mind has nothing to give you actually in terms of this you are what you are you you are you going to be your highest success. I can feel that you're right, and I can also feel the, the. I can feel the threshold or whatever, mm-hmm. and that's what you feel. That's why probably you invite me to go to go along. <laughs> yeah, I invite. And I want to. I want to, but I th- help me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Can you help me a little yes. bit? Yes, yeah, totally, totally. Uh, what, what what attracted me to come to the interview uh, was that I, I sensed there's something uh, from from you. And I, That's true. Yes, and uh, yeah. uh, to to uh, to help you. See, sometimes the mind sees that. Oh no, this is going to be. A, oh, it's going to change my life. It's going to try. No one has ever woken up to themselves and regret it. <laughs> but on the way, oh, the mind. Oh, what's going to do? And I can't afford it. I got no time. Blah, blah. Yeah. All of this is uh, mm. the the. I would say the um, the misdirection and the camouflaging over your true nature, which is here. See, if I had to say, listen, we're going to go and create together, I would think that's for some people that might be an adventure. But I say no. We only we are only discovering nothing to create. We are not going to create. Is already what is here is here. It is it is here. It would take you. Ten lifetimes to find it. When you find it, it will just be just like this moment. The opportunity is just like this here. And uh, sometimes I think we have to just get over our own mind and uh, the, the the restrictions and the, the difficulties created in the mind. Everything is created in the mind. 
Yeah. Yeah. Success and failure is created in mind. But the successes from the mind, they are not long lasting, you know, because the nature of the the person who takes that success is that they they are, they are, they are, it's a moving force. And that is fine when seen from the correct position. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I understand everything you say, and more than only with the mind. Mm-hmm. But the, the 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 understanding has to come to a profound recognition, not a creation. Not not you create something, you create the wrong thing. Um, it has to somehow uh, be so undoubtable for you. And uh, it's not even. I would not ask you to believe in it. Even it's 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 earlier than believing. If we are if we have been believing in many things, then I can say if you believe in this, it's a bit nearer. But this, uh, you cannot just believe in it. You can only be it. And the way to be it is not like an action, like not a, not not a verb, like I'm going to be it from now, because that's not acceptable. Also, nobody can be it as an action. You may discover that that is actually this always been here. It's always what you are. It is always what you are, um, but somehow it's been eclipsed by the the worldly view of oneself as a person. And that can be okay. I'm not saying you 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 become fully awake to yourself. And it's not just a bang on the head and suddenly you're awake, but it you have to somehow. Um, honor it and stay with it until because the mind will always keep fighting, but always its fight becomes much more clear and clearer. That but it's weakness from a place that's not fighting. And maybe in the past you would have gone along with a message from the mind, and now you see no, no, it's just another thought again. The mind will be offering lots of different thoughts and and opportunities to di- to divert your attention, almost as though there's some force within you. Mm-hmm. And that is not in support of your real freedom. For everybody, it's like that. Even here in Satsang, there are maybe 120 people on the land at the moment, and this question is put to them every day: that uh, you know, are you someone searching to be, to be no one? Are you someone searching to be consciousness? Or have you somehow transitioned into back into your natural state and seeing that work still goes on? We all work here, you know. The team works here. All these guys making uh, recordings, they work very hard. We all work, myself also. We're always doing something. But now it is in support of this also. It's not for personal glory or something. It's just it's just the expression of consciousness. Just to take away sometimes some myth that people feel you're just gonna sit around meditating all day and looking at the stars. That that's not true. Many people have families, they've got to, they also people have work, they've got a job. Some of the beings who are attending satsang, they never actually came here. Mm. And maybe they will never come here. And these days I'm not traveling, you know, and still there are people just awake, awaking to this. That for them it's not like a journey; they're trying to get to a destination. They realize that it's here. Now the the challenge is to that the mind comes in different forms, you know, to say, "Come, come, come, let's go and play," and to see that well, to recognize that. Not that you should not do anything, but to discern that which is. Authentic to your heart, and that which is just another diversion of your attention. If you ask one thing more, let it be: Yes, uh, how can I? How can something happen where this is not just my belief, or not that I know this, but that it's so clear that? That I am this, and it's not a belief. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A recognition has mm-hmm. happened, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to dress it up in some monumental costume. It's just so simple. It is here. There's no one here that's not that. Yet, where the mind lives, it feels like yeah, I didn't quite get it, and I'm, I feel sometimes I'm very close to it. And this is the mind's language. True. I 
feel very calm. <laughs> very, yes, very yes. calm. Yes, it's good. Ah. But it makes me quiet. You're not just quiet. What you are is everlasting peace and joy and harmony. And the, 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 the perfume of that is love and uh, stillness, peace, compassion, light, beingness. All this is not a philosophy. It's not a. It's not a dream. This this is the fundamental state and nature of all living beings. And if this life is for something in the highest sense, it's just to become aware of that here, not just here. And to to transcend the fear that that's going to make you into a strange creature. We are already strange. <laughs> yeah. To a living being, human being yeah. who is not living in their heart of love and, and peace, and who is, uh, say, full of fear and and restless. That is not our true nature. No? Whatever is to happen cannot give anything to this. Uh, the greatest happening only um, puts an end to the suffering mind. It's not that you are going to become whoa, not that it is. It just puts an end to the the struggling, torturous way in which we. We live sometimes even imagining that that's very high in itself. No. I would put more that awakening is that, is an end to suffering, mm. uh, needlessly also. Some for a while we have to experience all these things, and uh, um, but the real opportunity is to go beyond the limitations of ego and personhood. And the the, the obstacle seems that there's some kind of fear. That you're going to lose something precious, and I don't see what that could be. I'm looking for who can tell me what is the precious thing you're going to lose. And some people might feel, well, I have the freedom to do what I want. I just say you may have the illusion of doing the freedom to do what you want, but uh, what about the freedom to be who you are? Like this, we can leave it right here. No, it's fine. It's, I mean, it's, it's lunchtime and all this but, thing is fine. Yeah. And you know, I'd like to say something if I can. Also, please, please do. I am here at your service. Actually, at some point, if you want, you can always come and talk to me again. You can be off camera. I don't mind. It doesn't matter. Oh, I'd love that. The invitation is for you. It's not uh, for a show or something. Oh, thank so you. If, if you if you want, no, you. You can say, hey, can I come and see you? And we can sit uh, off camera. I'm totally fine. Oh, that's wonderful. I would love that. Yeah? I would love that. Me too. <laughs> Me because, too. Because I really, I really feel the calmness. I, it, it, it's, it feels like I have to say something which reflects that I am... Into the nothing or something, and everything I say about it is not that I yeah. know, but I try to explain a little There's bit. To nothing the you have to do or become right. for me. I right, not like that, and we don't have any expectations of uh, how you should be. And all. I'm totally. Uh, maybe you get to know me a bit better, and you can just relax in this <laughs> here because you know, being tense in yourself doesn't help anything. And, no. and, uh, you know, but, no, but uh, the interesting course, is, I, I really don't feel tense inside. Mm. Really don't. You, you make me so feel very, very comfortable. But I really try not to be there, only there, yeah. and then come up with a kind of sensible answer, which I can come up with, because it's not about the wording. I guess it's about being. 
Well, I have to say, this talk as it is, is, is going to be helpful for some people, many people. And that's beautiful that you say that, because that's the person, Frank, <laughs> would love that to happen. That a lot I, of people... I, I bless it for that, actually. Yeah. I feel very, very good. You know, I've had many interviews over the years, uh, since we've been on the road, you know, many interviews. I, I like that you bring yourself into the interview. Mm. And um, and that you opened she, up. She she advised me, Shri. Yeah, she, yeah. Be, just be authentic, Frank. Yeah, and that's what I try to do. And yeah, yeah. Is your name also Frank? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But actually, you know, so from from this place, you know, I'm not disappointed or something that oh, we didn't hit the enlightenment button or. No, <laughs> but my opportunity is always to to to, to look in this way, yeah. um, because I can be very cheeky and say I know that is what you are searching for, mm. and that I I cannot tell you. Look, if you go over there and go up there, you will find us. He said, No, it's with you always. Yourself is always with you. That is a deep knowing. I know. Yeah. Thank you so much, so much, so much, so much, Mad Budi, for this interview. Um, thank you, thank you. And thank you for the invitation to continue. Yes, offline. yes, genuinely. Uh, yes, yes, uh, yes. I'm really, really thankful, grateful for that. And uh, uh, have a good team that you can, if you want to, just contact with them and say, how about uh, can, I, can I come and have a coffee? <laughs> yeah. Talk? Also for resources. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so I very much yeah. for this interview and, uh, well, to be continued. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hi, Moji. Hi, um, Yesterday we had a wonderful uh, dialogue. Yes. And interview. And... Um, I had the chance to uh, hear it all back oh. yesterday evening mm -hmm. and heard some new things. <laughs> Not uh, picking it up in the interview itself. Um, somewhere at a certain point, you said to me, "Are you? Do you have a fear for something?" Mm -hmm. And I thought you were pointing to that moment of asking, and then I didn't feel any fear. Mm -hmm. I was very calm, but uh, I think you meant it differently, uh, since obviously there was a fear, uh, and you were trying, no, not trying, you were inviting me to really come to what we're just talking about, mm. and I couldn't come there then. Um, And I, I realized, yes, there is the fear of losing identity. There is the fear of really letting go. I like that, you see, it's honest, you see. I like it, it's true. Who isn't really afraid of losing identity? Yeah. But we don't hear it often admitted, no? Mm. An idea that, you know, wow, I don't know if I want to be nothing. Right. It's perfectly understandable <laughs> from the mind's point of view, no? True. We've all been brought up to be something. Yeah. And uh, it's like, whoa, where are we going here? Where are we going here? You know? Yeah. And uh, wherever the mind is there, the idea of nowhere or emptiness or nothing is like, ah! It's not that but that's not... But where you think you're going, so to speak, is only where you really are. Yeah. Yeah, that you pointed out, and then yeah. you said something even more important is it has to be um, it has to be fully been rec uh, it has to it has to have fully recognition mm -hmm. recognition to, yes. to really feel it it's not a belief it's mm -hmm. not a, mm -hmm. and as you just had the talks here I could feel it um, so I understand and that's not the good because it's not about understanding. Mm -hmm. I, I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. 
And what I found out is what's extremely helpful is to observe, 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 mm. keep mm. observing, mm. to make contact again with... Can you observe observing? Yeah, even that. Mm. Yeah. And that makes a kind of a strange no, loop. Do, no, 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 no. Don't just make an answer of some... Now, and, and, and say even, even the act of observing yeah. or the functioning of perceiving or perception yeah. is itself perceived. Yeah. So this is an already soulness. It is already? I mean, like, when I say that, you didn't create something. No. No, no. So that which, how does it feel when even something as subtle as the subtlest thing that you know you exist, you know you exist. Mm -hmm. You're aware of existence, mm -hmm. okay? That which is aware of existence or even non-existence also, you're aware of the sense of a presence and even absence of presence, you're capable of wearing, yep. of being aware. What is, the, what is that which is capable of perceiving what is and what is not, or what arise and what disappear? Can even uh, have a sense of non-existence. Yeah? That's the question yeah, I think you asked me when you said, if there was no one yes. in, in the room you yeah. could explain to who you are, then who are you to yourself? Yes. I think this mm -hmm. is it. Just empty. Just being. Yeah. Just here now. Yes. Yes. Is there fear in that? No, not at all. There's a, a, a great peacefulness in that. Yes, yes. <laughs> Is there a greater... Uh, nothingness to come to? No. No, no. No. This, no, no. Degrees of nothingness? No. No, no. No, but no, absolutely not. This, yeah. is, this is the place. Yes. Yeah. But sometime, sometimes the mind says, ah, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So I can be that and I can be this. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But that also is seen. And that's exactly what I was referring to, uh -huh. because that's what I see myself doing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know and I know now that's also being observed. So yes, yes. In this in the space and the capacity to observe, what is the what is this? What is there? Where even the act of observing is perceived, no? What is here? Not there. What what Cause is even perceiving yeah, to it's everything. Huh? It, it's a present. It's everything. Yes, yes, yes. It's everything. It's yes, everywhere. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah. What is confirming that? What has the ability to confirm it is everywhere? It's here. It's not there. It's here. It's somewhere. It's 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 it's, it's other than you. What are you like here? Who are you here? If you want to use the word you. Uh, does it have a lineage or um, uh, nationality or no, 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 no. age or... No. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have identity. Is it being sustained by something? No. No. Can it finish? No. Ha <laughs> ha! Oi, only you can see this? Oh, no. <laughs> of course not. No. Okay. So is this an experience that belongs to time and space? No. No. What are you seeing? An object? No. No. Subject? No. That's you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Did I give you anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, you reconnected me to yes, to you and to everyone yes. and to myself. Yes. So yes, yes, you have given me a lot. 
is that an experience that you must keep? No. No, it's impossible. Yeah, but can it be somehow overshadowed or take time? Or can it be lost or um, camouflaged by something? Take your time to everybody's question. Can everybody be on this one horse? Yes. Okay, so you can say. Well, in itself, not, but it can be if my mind is come step into again. If yes. it steps in, it's yes. camouflaged. Yes. Then watch the mind that seems to be able to do that. Can it actually do that, or does it seem to be able to do that? It seems. Yeah. How does that seeming be curbed, you see? How that? How can that, that apparent overshadowing happen in a kind of convincing way? So that when, when the mind energy is identified with, what you have said now seems like it's cancelled. And yet that which causes, causes the saying, the admission, I cannot be anything other than this, no? um, is not alterable within itself. It cannot, no? no? no. Okay. But uh, thought arising, and uh, identification arising as, oh no, I've got to, I've lost this again, and oh my mind, and believing those thoughts can create a kind of an eclipsing, absolutely seeming eclipsing absolutely. of this. A lot. Yes. What is the limitation of the, the real thing? Any limitation? I am the, my identity is the limitation. Identity is limited, but that which is aware of limited identity is that limited? No, no. So what can eclipse it? Nothing. So it only appears that something eclipses. Yeah. It. Okay. Yeah. No. Nothing can eclipse it. No. But it seems, though, that I'm incapable to eclipse it by my when my when I identify again. It seems as though you're capable of eclipsing it. Yeah. Yeah. Or something is. Something Because is. you're calling yourself you yeah. again. Yeah. And you is then the identity, Frank. Yes. 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 Mm. Mm. So what to do? Stop thinking that you're Frank <laughs> and just be. Yes. Can, can that? Can you, by determination, stop an idea, an identity that seems to sprout without, without will, like a reflex, it just happens, no? Something, no? And my advice would be just to keep checking that, because if we don't, it's amazing how a habit is formed, and that habit creates the illusion Absolutely. that again you're this limited da 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 like yeah, that, no? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm. Uh, uh, well, I want to say I'm very good in that, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. I've had a graduation in there, so. Yes. <laughs> You're proud of the graduation? <laughs> no. 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 But he is. He is. Yes, 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 yes. How real is he? Well. How real is he? No, not real. Mm. In essence, you know, not real. Well, because what you shared now. Uh, it's, it's it's very simple, very powerful at the same time. Mm. Um, does it mean you must give up your job and go and live up in the mountain in a cave or something? <laughs> Fortunately, not. <laughs> <laughs> Why unfortunate? Why, it could I also fortunately be. not. Huh? Fortunately, fortunately not. Oh, fortunately. <laughs> uh, why fortunately not? <laughs> because I like On, what I do. Yes. I like and, what I do. Uh, yes. Yes. I love what I do. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So now you speak uh, from the more limited sense of I, which is okay in the mm. in the great space of I. It's it's what you say, uh, what you refer to as the uh, well, in the theater of consciousness. It's yes. one of yes. the reflection of the absolute. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So this I this more limited state of identity, in which um, the one consciousness, which is uh, limitless now appears to be limited, have specific 
likes right. and dislikes and this type of things, okay? But it's understood it's just a sort of play. But sometimes it doesn't just be seem like it's just a play. It becomes oh, no. like, like it becomes this. very serious sometimes. Yes. Yeah. yes. And perhaps in moments like that, uh, the urge to 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 um, to observe it uh, um, may not be strong. Also, true. It may just play like, true. Yeah, I know it's not real, but I got to get on with things, and, and and that's that's fine also, or is it? I don't know. Well, it's fine also if you consider that it comes and goes. Yes, it's always temporary. But sometimes I can be. You know, it comes and goes. Do you have to wait for it to go? In that moment that you know it comes and goes, it will be gone. Huh? In the moment that I realize from the absolute, it yeah. will be gone. But yeah. that also always looks like a trick. Yes. And it, it can't be done. Yes. I guess. No, I don't feel that uh, unless there is. Uh, a, a personal intellect playing there, mm -hmm. playing with the idea of realizing and not realizing, mm -hmm. but is putting a lot of energy to preserve its position right. as the one who understands things, right. but actually is only uh, an aspect of something and not the totality. Let's put it like that. No? Yeah, that's the pitfall I absolutely recognize for myself. Mm -hmm. Just being a kind of teacher. Yeah. Well, if you, if it is understood that this is likely to happen, and this is where perhaps your focus could be spent more to look at that, mm -hmm. because it may s seem to appear very lightly, but if it's given too much attention, it gradually seems to spread everything. And, right. and it's not just spreading out there. It has an energetic presence in the body also. Yeah. It, it also it becomes part of the, the pattern of the breath, of the, the sure. pulse. Sure. It's like it feels... Even closer than intimacy, it feels self, no? and um, and it's good to even observe these things, and not regarding anything as an enemy. Also, I mean, everything is you. Yeah. So not personally, but everything is yeah, is so that for, for me. me mm -hmm. uh, Sorry, you being what again? <laughs> yeah, this is nice. <laughs> For me, the, per the, the person Frank, okay. it helps. It helps to be able to observe, to unfold the. Uh, let's say to, well, is to not, take away is the it eclipse. not better to be observing the Frank than Frank observing yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's very important. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Because if Frank starts to take the credit for observing, yeah. <laughs> we are in trouble. <laughs> 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 yeah. True. Yeah, yeah. True. Yes. True. I, I, I put uh, attention on this because it has happened before. We have come to such a beautiful place of seeing, and uh, it feels very, oh, wow, you know, wow, I really see this. And gradually, we don't see that the mind is collecting, you know, mm -hmm. compliments. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> you <Number> recall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then it starts to become important again, the, the Frank. Yeah. No, I, I understand fully what you say. Yes. Yeah. Is there is that pops up? Is that is that what's called humility? Humility. What? To be aware of the fact that you're not the person. Mm -hmm. So, by nature, you serve and don't take any granted for that? No, because then I'll, ha I'll have to be a person thinking that I'm not the person mm. True. doing that. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, there, there, there is, it's as though if, if, uh, if you were very near to drowning, you fell over the, uh, the boat, and somehow you lost the, the, the power to stay afloat. And no, mm -hmm. and uh, struggling, or as an example was put, that uh, when a disciple was asking, 
how 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 much must I be on board to 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 how deeply must I take this 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 exercise to observe with detachment? And uh, the the teacher, the master, took him to the sea and said, "Come with me." And then he pushed him underneath the water mm. and held him down. Okay, and then <laughs> Take him out, <laughs> and he asked him, "How much did you want to breathe?" And he said, "Everything in me needed to breathe." He says, "When you have that level of yearning uh, to honor your freedom, uh, then uh, you'll be free." It's a strong one. It's a, it's, a, it's a strong thing, and perhaps it was particularly strong because, in the case of that particular disciple, needed that. Not everyone need such intense things. No, Some but it's reflected that you really have to feel the urge. Well, only because it's a tendency of the mind to take credit and to say, "Yeah, you know, well, I did it, man. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I've been there myself." <laughs> You know, and I still have the medal for it. <laughs> you know, then we have to watch this because there's a strong tendency in the human expression of consciousness to make claims mm -hmm. yep. that I did something, I got something like that, and that's how perhaps a genuine moment of seeing gets lost again, and the ego lives to reign for more time. So it's not uh, the seeing in itself is so innocent, it's so pure. But we only have to watch out for the one who claims it, and uh, and somehow recognizing the. And sometimes we are recognizing the importance of it, because of the memory of the pain of not being yourself, gives the drive to keep looking and just to honor it, not just out of duty. I must, 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 must. But in, maybe in the beginning. We, we, we attend a it, and it gradually just turns into a, a very quiet joy mm. and just space, spaciousness. But never say, this will never ever happen. My, my mind will never come back. Because it even takes some arrogance and a person to be saying that. You know, just gradually. This is what the, the, the awakened beings did, is to stay with it and just sit with it. It becomes a joy, not just a duty. What may start out to be a duty becomes a just joy, and uh, not a person's joy. Mm. As I said, freedom is not for the person, but from the person. Because that is the saboteur, no? Yeah. That wants to claim I did it. it. All life it's been claiming something. I am this, I'm really good, I'm the best, and so on. So that, when I say none of this would be possible if it was not that the, the, the mind um, could imitate or pretend to, to, to be the self. Mm. And it does that in the form of the one who says, I did it, I understand it, I want it, I want the goal like this. And then that voice is not detected to be mm. arrogance. And that is why m many just went and sat by themselves, just sit, sit, and be with it. Mm. Until the ego lost its appeal, mm. so to speak. Mm. 